Lastly, I just want to introduce you a little bit to JUnit and how we can use that to ensure that everything is working as it should be. Uh, unit testing is really nice when you're especially working in teams or groups to make sure that you didn't mess up someone else's code. Especially when the code base gets really large, it's hard to have a good idea of what other areas of the code your code will affect. Um, so the first thing we're going to do here is we're going to import the JUnit um, into Maven. So I'm just going to go into the pump file down here. And under dependencies, I'll add these two. Um, and we'll just import the changes. There we go. And if you look here, there's a scope. And that means that this library or these libraries can only be used in the test directory. And right now, we don't even have a test directory. So we're going to go up to sources, create new, and then directory. And IntelliJ is really nice, so it's already going to suggest that we just pick this one. And we'll double click it, and there we go. And if you look at the current color here, you'll see that it's green. And that just signifies that IntelliJ sees this as your, as your test folder. So if you go back to the counter, we can then click on this until the light bulb occur or appear, and then we can click on create test. And yeah, that makes it super easy. So when I click here, it's going to create a new test down in this test folder. And it's going to be called the same as our class, just with the test. It's going to have the same namespace or package. Um, and just uh, that just makes it really easy to locate which tests um, are so associated with which uh, classes. So now we want to create a test uh, for the for the stuff that we have done so far. I want to quickly just you know um, I want to be able to just change the max. So down here we'll just create a setter for this. And you know what else? We are also going to set a default counter constructor. That way, it'll always default to 2,000 or 200,000, and uh, you know if nothing is specified. So let's go back to our test. In here, we want to create the first test, and I'm thinking here we just want to make sure that when you create a counter instance, it's going to be uh, the max value is going to be set to 200,000. So that's for the shim symbol. Let's say void. Um, default counter should have a max of 200,000. So many of you will probably think that this is a really ugly way to do, um, you know, method signatures, and it is by by all means. Um, but it also it's also really read readable, um, which makes a lot of sense when you're at least writing tests. Um, so yeah. I also wanted to add that when we define signatures from tests, we often focus on the behavior, and that's why it's also a good idea to define it when you're naming your tests. So in here, we're just going to create an instance of the counter, like so. So when you're testing, we're always asserting. So what are we asserting? We're asserting that when we create a new counter, its default maximum value is going to be 200,000. So the first thing we do, you're going to use assert equals. We expect the value to be 200,000. We do, we're gonna get it. Get, okay, so we need a getter for that. We're gonna go into this and I'm gonna go say like that. And we'll say get max. And if we run this right now, okay, we can't run it because I haven't marked it as a test. So you go up to the top of the method signature and then you just add the annotation test like so. And as soon as um, IntelliJ recognizes this, you'll see that it adds these, this little play icon, and we can actually run the test. And we're green, which just means that it went through. If I'd said 201, guess what? It'd be red. So it's going to say, well, it expected the value to be 200,001, but the actual value is actually 200,000. So we're just going to create a couple more to make everything you know, sink in. Um, let's just say counter can have, oh sorry, counter with a max value of 300, 500,000. Counter, counter, new counter, so equals 500,000. 
counter.getmax and over here we of course want to specify 500,000 like so and we can run them both of them like, like that and let's just do a last one where we check that the counting is actually working because you know that's really the you know the most important part value should be true 100,000 by default so once again sorry once again we'll just create a new counter and there we go so before I just proceed let's just take a second and just notice that I've done this many times now creating a new instance and luckily for us in many testing frameworks we can use what's called the setup method so if you press alt enter here you can just click the setup method and we have a method that will run before each test so I'm going to create an attribute up here called counter and then down here we're gonna we're gonna just create an instance of counter and that way I can remove it from this one not this one because we know here we're creating a different one but I can also remove it here then I can say assert equals well we want to assert that the value is 200,000 counter get value and guess what this is gonna fail because we haven't started counting but let's just run it yeah as we see down here it expected 200,000 but we got zero so let's just say counter dot start incrementing perfect so let's just take a second and admire how cool tests are because with the test we can now see that the functionality works and in the future when we're changing code we can just run the test again and right away we'll be you know um, we will get the information if it's still running or if we made something that made the word the code stop working um, so especially like I earlier said in large code bases this is a really nice functionality so the last thing I want to do is I want to show just how you can use code coverage to also ensure that your code base is secured by the unit tests so if you click up here you can see run counter test with coverage and when I do that IntelliJ is gonna analyze our whole um, project and see how many percent or how what percentage of our project is covered by these tests so if you see over here, we have no unit tests that cover the app, we have no unit tests that cover the primary controller, but 61% of the methods are covered by tests and 61 lines or 66 lines. And if we go in here, you get a nice overview of which thing which things are not being used. Oh sorry, which things are not being tested. So we don't test this for example. And yeah, that's it. Good luck.